hope you're doing great. I was looking across our stories here on Smarter News this week, and I think this next one is the biggest story of the week. Not because it has the flashiest headlines, but because it has the potential for major impact for future generations of Americans. And that is the trip of the Saudi crown prince to the United States over the last several weeks. He's been almost everywhere, Washington, D.C., New York City, Silicon Valley, Hollywood, and he's been meeting with all sorts of fascinating people, the head of Amazon, the head of Disney, The Rock. <laughs> and so why is he here? What is he doing? Why is it important to us? These are some of the questions that I asked Jonathan Shanzer of the Foundation of Defensive Democracies. Jonathan has looked into Saudi Arabia over the years and really researched terror financing, but also the spread of an extreme form of Islam and how it's been spread within the Saudi kingdom and beyond. That's super important to us, especially when it comes to terrorism. So here's our conversation. I hope you enjoy it. Is this the craziest spring break trip you've ever seen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sort of remembering what I did in college, going down to going down to the uh, Panhandle of Florida and uh, picking up a couple of cakes with Wait, fraternity runners. Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> That's a whole other side of Jonathan Shanzer we have yet That's to right. see. Well, you know, everybody was once, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is a charm offensive. It, it really is, and so uh, it, it's a little bit of a wild spring break, as you call it, but it really is a. Um, uh, you know, th this is about a young guy trying to establish himself on the world stage. Will we be safer if our relationship with Saudi Arabia is closer? Right now, I would say that, you know, we're trending toward yes. I don't want to say 100% yes, because we don't know, we can't control what Saudi foreign policy is, and they could take a turn for the worse. But right now, what they look like they're trying to do is to change things, to turn things around, to become a more moderate, responsible country uh, with more uh, modern leadership. This is all positive. Saudi Arabia announced their first movie theaters opening in more than 30 years, which I think is hard for us to imagine here in America that they haven't opened a new movie theater. But there's a lot of irony in this. Here you had the Crown Prince in Hollywood meeting with all these media execs. And a lot of their movies can't be played in Saudi Arabia because of the very conservative interpretation of Islam wouldn't, wouldn't allow it, or they'd have to be edited in some way. And so even that small change, I wonder what even that small change means in a society like Saudi Arabia, and by proxy, what it means for us. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, it, that, that is a significant development, the idea that you know they're now allowing outside media um, into the country and, 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 you know, movies that are made in the United States reflect our morals, our, uh, our, our sense of culture, uh, or, or in some cases, Sometimes. lack thereof, right? <laughs> That's uh, right. I mean, the, the, the first movie that was played in the, in, in the kingdom was the emoji movie. Um, which I missed that is, one. Yeah, I, I, I did too, but, uh, I mean, even my kids don't want to see that, but yet that's what's, uh, that's what's being shown. So, you know, you, you have these changes there. You have the fact that women are now allowed to drive for right. the first time. It's about 100 years too late. And hold, hold happened. the jokes about women drivers, all right, everyone out there. Right, that's it. <laughs> right, right. right. So, uh, so, you know, these things are changing. If we start to see the Saudis roll back, their uh, plan to propagate what we call Wahhabism or a radical interpretation of Islam through mosques and schools and cultural centers as they have been for the last three decades. That is a huge development for the United and States. And let me, let me stop you there because you put out a really interesting report a few years ago about how inside Saudi Arabia the message of these radical clerics was getting out using social media and technology. So this is something you've been looking at a long time, along with the terror financing angle as well, when you worked at the Treasury. So what is the state of that right now? How strong are those voices? How worried should we be? So uh, we, we are seeing some of these very same clerics that I wrote about for that monograph several years ago. They're the ones who are now under house arrest. So it's, a, it's, it's really a terrific development from my perspective. The problem, though, right now is that even as they're cleaning up these elements from within the kingdom, there is the question of what they are sponsoring abroad. In other words, from Europe to across the Middle East, even South America, I have seen some of these Wahhabi institutions, these Saudi-backed institutions, that really promote a radical interpretation of Islam. And these are the, the sort of um, uh, channels 
through which radicalized youth will actually uh, travel to become terrorists and eventually find themselves on the battlefields of Iraq or Afghanistan or Syria and beyond. So the question right now is whether the Saudis are taking steps to mitigate that as well. A quick final question. What are you going to be watching for when he returns home? After he leaves America, the trip is over. What is the next thing you're going to be watching for to see? Is this a, is this a change we can believe in, to borrow a slogan? Right. I mean, look, the one thing that came out of all of this, uh, this visit, there was one troubling component for me. There was an interview that he gave with Jeffrey Goldberg, who is the uh, editor of The Atlantic. And during that interview, he challenged Jeffrey on whether or not there even is such thing as Wahhabism. And of course, mm -hmm. Wahhabism, again, is that radical interpretation of Islam that Saudi Arabia has, uh, has pushed out there into the world for decades. That's the thing that I'm looking for now. Does he come home and continue to kind of stress that pro-Western outlook? Or does he try to make up for maybe some of his um, perceived transgressions while he's here in the United States? We want to see a certain consistency on his part. That is going to be huge from my perspective. I want to see him saying the same thing back home in Saudi Arabia as he was saying here in Washington or Silicon Valley or Hollywood. All right. We'll be watching too. Jonathan, thanks for joining us on Smarter News. The first interview. You're, this awesome. is it. I'm so excited. Mark the date. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so much.